want to take this opportunity again to remind you that you'll get an email um, with information on how to watch the rest of the series on Chaiflix. Um, and I want to give a big thank you to Chaiflix for bringing this series to us. Um, Petra, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Is this your first time seeing it with an audience? Actually, it is. <laughs> It's the uh, shame about television, right? Yes. Um, usually, everybody's alone at home and watches it, including the creators. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's interesting to feel the energy. And I haven't seen it in a very long time. Um, so it was very exciting for me. <laughs> um, so let, let me ask, first of all, where, where did this all start? How, how did this project come to life? Um, many, many years ago, actually. Um, I didn't set out to write a story about the horrible behavior of Switzerland after the Second World War. It was I was researching something else, and I came across this term. It was uh, rat lines, and I was very intrigued by it, and I started to do some research and found out that the rat lines were the escape routes of the war criminals um, after the Second World War. And one of those rat lines uh, went through Switzerland, through Bern, with the knowledge of all the politicians and the Red Cross, and then on to Italy, and then on to South America. And that was really a shocking discovery, because this is not something we learn about in school. <laughs> Actually, we learn very little about, especially after the war. And then researching this, I came across this so-called Buchenwald action that Switzerland offered to help, um, you know, survivors and invited them to, to Switzerland. And there was this excellent book written about this and also, you know, described in detail how badly these survivors were treated. And so the parallelity of the survivors of the Holocaust in Switzerland, all these people who had had come from the, the camps, and at the same time there were these um, war criminals in, in 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 my country. At the same time, that that was something that just didn't, I couldn't forget about this, and I started to work on this topic. And this seems to be a, a pretty invested production. Was this something that uh, um, Swiss funding was willing to get behind, or? Um, surprisingly, when I um, came to Swiss television with this idea, they immediately said, we want to do this. Even though it's, you know, in Switzerland, Swiss television has a kind of like an educational aspect, and they also want to fund things that are not just entertaining, but have some kind of cultural and historical value. So they, they were behind the project really quickly, to my surprise. <laughs> And then was there a controversial reaction to it once it came out? It, uh, didn't, um, uh, I'm sure there were sides that, that acknowledged, and, and, and there are sides that always like to criticize, um, but were there sides that were a little more defensive? Yes, um, not surprisingly, more the right-wing um, newspapers. They you know, thought it was exaggerated. But um, I mean, I did so much research, I didn't like, all the scenes in the in the um, home of the boys, like I didn't invent that they made this before and after pictures. I, I mean, there were so many um, outrageous scenes that I just had to pick <laughs> and choose from some of them. So, and it was quite obvious that there was a, a lot of research and it could be proven, so they couldn't really discredit the show, but they tried. But in general, I think the reception was very welcoming because nobody knows a lot about this time after the Second World War in Switzerland. And actually they're using this show now in schools, which I think is really great. I'll ask one more question, and then I'll give an opportunity for your questions, so so be prepared. Um, so without giving any spoilers, if you could tell us a little bit of uh, where where we go from here, what's to expect in the show? Oh, um, I really want you <laughs> to watch the <laughs> next four episodes, but, you know, I, I think it's all laid out that it will come head to head uh, at some point because all these threads come together in this one family and the family and the company is, is like a metaphor for Switzerland and it will come to a head, head to head with the brothers but also with the young couple 
um, because they all deal very differently with the big moral and ethical questions they're faced with. Um, I, I think it's a fantastic um, idea for a show. I think I think it ob obviously has universal appeal and uh, can speak uh, to any country in the world. It's um, uh, I mean. The, the, the it's happening right now, I don't know if any of you are going to nerd out for a moment, but the Star Wars universe is also talking about this like post-war um, chaos that exists and how people try to take uh, advantage of that. And uh, I, th I, I think mean, what struck me now watching it with so much distance is like how, and that was a fact, but it's always shocking to see it now, is like Switzerland was such an island. I mean, you have to imagine Europe around it was completely destroyed. Like the dis Nazis destroyed everything, like the infrastructure they destroyed the people. It was complete chaos and destruction. And in the middle of that, this complete pristine world, it was surreal. And it was for a lot of uh, Jewish ref refugees who came to Switzerland, survivors, they thought they're in a dream, in a fever dream. They couldn't believe the markets were full with food, the people were well-dressed, there was no destruction. They couldn't believe that this existed at the same time as they experienced what they experienced. And it just struck me again, also in the first episode, the marriage and the, the complete untouchedness of, of, of Switzerland and, and their, you know, there was a reason why Switzerland wasn't touched because they, you know, they were basically Hitler's bank. Um, it's, it's. I mean, it can happen with some level of corruption, and um, and uh, I'm surprised it took this long for it to come out. Yeah, um, they were very good at hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have some uh, questions from the audience. We'll pass the microphone around. Hi, thank you. It, it was um, very, very touching and made me want to cry in many ways. Um, it, it's more of a comment or more of what you're saying. What really struck me was um, how much they didn't want to help the Holocaust survivors and they kept saying they don't have money. And all that went through my mind was um, how much Switzerland screwed people that had left money there and life insurance policies and and deny they ever had that. It, it just, it, to me, was very, just very painful watching that. And um, so it's just more of a comment that, that what I felt brought out so much in the movie. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> that's like one aspec aspect, um, like Switzerland not giving the money back to the Jewish also survivors, the money that was on their banks. I mean, all of that came, the nastiness of that came out in the 90s. And that actually, because, you know, there was a lawsuit against Switzerland, and um, and that was actually the I that ignited a big um, report. The Bershia brief is like twelve volumes, and that was a very important um, source uh, for my research. So they did, you know, uh, in the nineties. It's really late. They started to, you know, admit what they've done, and they made this really neat report and then put it into the archives. And all that knowledge did never go to the people. Like it doesn't, it's not taught in the schools. They did their due diligence, like they did what they had to do neatly and nicely, but they made sure nobody knows about it. <laughs> so yeah, so when I read like these volumes, there's multiple shows in there, like how it's, it's not just, um, you know, the banks, it's also the, the stealing of the art. And, and what, what the show is about is how they used um, the knowledge, sci science, scientists, German scientists' knowledge to build up their industry. And, and I, I, would, I would claim that Switzerland's wealth is actually built on that also. Um, well, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, the, um, this reminds me of the movie, uh, well, the English title is The Boat is Full. You must be familiar with it. And yeah. And the fact that, uh, you know, what was so startling about that movie was that not only were the, the Swiss rejecting the Jews who were looking for refuge, but they actually turned them over to the German border posts, uh, which would seem like a startling thing. And I, and I saw corroboration online about that. Um, now, now um, my understanding is that 
once the tide of war turned, then they actually did start to take in some Jewish refugees. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what the show is about. So Switzerland, because they realized, you know, now the allies were the bosses, um, and they realized they, you know, their reputation was really ruined after the war. They tried to make good. So they offered actually to, s to take 2,000 um, survivors from Buchenwald. And in the end, they only took 370. And um, they, they, it was a propaganda act, actually. They, they wanted to have the children that's in the first episode where he says, but we expect the children, and these are young men, and, the rab and actually a rabbi, in, in, in reality, a rabbi told the authorities that all the children have been killed. That's why they were only teenagers. Um, so it was really a PR thing, and that's why there weren't any, there wasn't any school books. There wasn't, they didn't even have soap. They were housed in a really bad house, so it all was just a facade. Yeah, and that's what the you know the the whole episodes are really about, also showing how badly they were treated. We'll take the last two questions here. One. And then. Could you speak a little bit about the art? that Switzerland housed, that had been stolen from Jews and didn't mention, and it took a long time to repatriate this art? Well, that that is a huge, uh, as I said, you could write a whole 10-episode <laughs> show about just that. I mean, that's just one of the, basically, Switzerland, um, you know, Hitler used Switzerland as, as as its b bank in many ways, also with trading art. And what they did is like they stole everything in Poland and everything in the East, and they needed currency for their war, and that's what happened in Switzerland. They transformed art and everything they could steal, they, they kind of transformed into currency to fuel their uh, war machinery. But, you know, there's, right, just last year was a huge scandal in Zurich because this museum had stolen art and they were exhibi exhibiting it and there was a huge controversy and um, it's it's an ongoing discussion. Yeah, I, was <coughs> I was curious about how you chose the textile industry and that made that fabric mill kind of the, the center of the family business and the question of the modern, you know, moving into synthetic uh, fabric as a, as a you know, the issue, the driving thing. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how, how you picked that and, and what you had to do to educate yourself about that. I had to learn <laughs> a lot about um, chemical fibers and <laughs> um, just so just enough to tell the story. So uh, this is actually based on a real story. So everything in the show is like the, the, the characters are amalgam of all kinds of real people. Um, and the story of the factory is taken from a real story, a real event that the Swiss wanted to have their own nylon and the, the patents were extremely expensive. So this one company, and it's actually the company that's now owned by the super far right, Mr. Blocher, who is like an ultra anti-Semite and uh, you know, like really he's like the Trump of Switzerland. So he owns that chemical plant. And that the base of that, um, the, the founding story is that he actually, like the founding fathers, they hired German scientists to create their own Swiss nylon. And then they said, like their slogan was, it's like it's completely, it's completely Swiss, even though the people who invented the fabric were Germans. And there were actual German scientists who came from IG Farben, and IG Farben was the producer of the gas and everything. So there was a lot of, um, you know, Switzerland imported a, no a lot of like technical, technological and chemical um, knowledge from Germany. Like, sw like America. Yeah, like NASA. Uh, Switzerland is not the only country who did that, like everybody did it. But it, I think Switzerland was particularly well at hiding it. There was actually a real, you know, in the 50s, Switzerland really created this pristine um, image they have. It was a, it was a real um, conscious effort to clean themselves. And so, you know, Heidi, chocolate, the watches, <laughs> all the beautiful things, they, they really aggressively, you know, um, projected that into the world to cover up that they really were heavily, you know, guilty in many ways. 
What's next for you? Um, I'm working on several projects here in the States, but also in Switzerland still and Germany. So, yeah, I, it's it's um, the movie movie making industry is a is an up and down, and you have to have a lot of projects and then just hope that one go gets going. <laughs> and um, one one of my passion projects uh, takes place in an American men's prison, and it's about Alzheimer's in prison. So, and I did a lot of research in California and talked to a lot of people there, and it's a very intimate story between two two prisoners. We look forward to, to hearing more about it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for bringing this to us. Folks, you could go home now and start watching your, start binging. Um, on Highflix, check your emails, of course, for more information. Um, thank you all, and have a good night. Oh, it's just, uh, in, in German, it's just called Frieden, which is just peace. And it's a bit ironic because for the Swiss, that's something they actually, for them, the war actually started after the war because it was a, an economic war. Thank you. Thank um, you very if much. If you have any questions about Chaiflix, we have Anis here in the corner who will answer anything. Thank you very much.